Hello everyone, welcome to Geeker Mag. In this video, I am going to show you how to install Google TV on a USB drive and then use it on PC to enjoy Android TV experience. Before that, if you find this video useful in any way, like it and subscribe to the channel as we are trying to hit 30,000 subscribers. So without wasting any time, let's learn the steps. First of all, we need Google TV ISO file and other related files required to complete the procedure. For that, check the link in the description and download the file from there. It's around 2 GB in the size. Copy paste the link in a browser and hit enter and then click download and this will start downloading the file. Once you get the file, right click on it and select extract all. You can also use 7-zip or WinRAR for this if you already have it. After extraction, you will find the ISO file of Google TV as well as storage folder. If you open the storage folder, it contain different storage files that we will use later in this video for extending internal storage of the Android or Google TV. Now we need to make bootable USB drive for Android TV. And for this, we will be using the Rufus, free tool that helps in creating bootable USB drives. Visit Rufus website. I have added the link in a description. On this page, scroll down to download section and download the latest version of Rufus, that is version 4.11. Click on it to obtain the .exe file. Double click the .exe file and when USC dialog box appear, click yes to continue. It's a portable tool so we don't need to install it. When Rufus open up, this is how it going to look like. Now we need to plug in the USB drive. For this tutorial, I'll be using 64 GB 3.0 USB drive. But you can use USB drive having minimum storage of 8, 16 or even 32 GB. But I recommend go for 16 GB. It's because more storage you have, more app storage you will enjoy later in the Android TV. Also, I recommend you to go for 3.0 USB drive or external SSD for snappy and smoother experience while using the Android TV or Google TV. After you plug in, Rufus will automatically detect the USB drive with the storage listed on the top like this. In case you are using the external SSD, then click show advanced drive properties option and make sure to check this option that reads list USB hard drives. Otherwise your external USB drive will not be detected by Rufus. Also keep in mind, whatever USB drive or SSD you are using, make sure to create backup of the content inside it as this will be removed permanently in upcoming steps and proceed with no data in it. Now head back to boot selection option and then click select. In the browse window, head over to the location where you have extracted Google TV files and then select Google TV 13 ISO file from there. Next, you will see persistent partition size slider. Move the slider to maximum. This will help in reserving the extra space on the USB drive. Next, move on to partition scheme. Here you will find two options. If your PC is new and support UEFI, then select GPT. While for older PCs with BIOS only, select MBR. I'll go with GPT. Leave the file system to large FAT32. After that, click on the start button. Now you will get the dialog telling you that all the data in the USB drive or external SSD will be deleted during the process. As I told you earlier, I assume there is no data in it or you have already created the backup. This will start the process of creating bootable USB drive for Google TV. The process will take around 5 to 10 minutes depending on the speed of USB drive. Once done, you have successfully created the bootable USB drive for Google TV. Now if you boot at this point, you will get around 3 GB of space out of which 1.14 GB is available for use. You can clearly see that in the file explorer. Let's learn how to extend this storage space. For that, click on the start button and select disk management. In the disk management, you will find out your USB drive. Now you can see that Rufus has created two drive. First one is bootable drive while other one is persistence that we selected earlier in the video. Now we need to format this drive from FAT32 
to extract partition to claim more storage space. For that, right click on the volume and select delete from this menu. Click yes to confirm the action. Now this volume will turn unallocated. Right click on it again and select new simple volume. In this wizard, click next. Now choose the maximum volume size and click next. Assign the drive letter and click next. On this screen, using the file system drop down, select XFAT. Give volume label. It's up to you whatever you want to name it. I will name it system and then click next and then finish. Wait for few seconds and you will get the new system partition that is formatted in XFAT. Now if you head back to file explorer, you will see this drive. Here we need to add two files that we obtained in the first step. These files will serve as app storage in Google TV. Open the boot partition drive and look for the file with the name system.sfs. To extend the storage, we need to cut this file and paste it into the system partition drive. I repeat, don't copy, just cut it and paste it. It's crucial. After that, go to Google TV Extracted Files and open the storage folder. Inside it, you will find different data files starting from 4 GB to 64 GB. Now, if you are confused which one you need to use, it totally depends on the size of USB drive you are using. If you are using 8 GB USB drive, go for 4 GB. For 16, go for 8. For 32, go for 16. And for 64, go for 32. It's always good to leave some space in the storage drive for better experience. As I'm using 64 GB USB, I will use 32 GB file. For that, right click on the selected data file and select extract all. Once done, open the extracted folder and you will find a data file. Copy it and paste it into the system partition drive next to system.sfs file. Once you have both the files, your bootable Google TV USB drive is ready to use. Before booting the USB drive, we need to disable Secure Boot. It's because Secure Boot only allow running trusted operating systems like Windows. And this Android TV is customized. So when Secure Boot is enabled, you won't be able to run it. If your PC is new and have Secure Boot, then you need to enter the BIOS or UEFI setup. I have covered detailed instruction on how to do that, so check the link in the description. For Dell PCs, once you are in the BIOS, you will see this screen. Look for Secure Boot and select Secure Boot Enable and uncheck the box for Secure Boot Enable and click Yes. Apply the changes and exit the BIOS. For other manufacturers, check the information in the description. Now you are all set to boot Android TV from USB drive. Restart your PC. And on the black screen, you need to press boot selection key on the keyboard. For Dell, it's F12. For different manufacturers, the key is different. You will find all details about it in the description. In the boot selection menu, select the USB drive and hit enter. After that, Android TV boot menu will appear. Here you will get the list of different kernels. The normal kernel like this are designed for internal display like for laptop screen. While kernel with external display are optimized for HDMI or display outputs. Select the basic kernel as we are going to use it on the laptop. In case normal kernel doesn't work, gives error or show black screen, 
use the kernel with external display. Wait for few seconds and you will see Google TV animation. As you are using it for the first time, it gonna stay for a while, so don't panic. Once you see the welcome screen, choose your language. I'll go with English United States. You can select it depending on your region. Next, you may be asked if you want to link your Android TV with Android phone. It's optional and it's up to you whether you want to do it or not. I will skip it as this can be done later. On this screen, connect to internet connection. Select the Wi-Fi network connection, enter the password and move on. If you are connected to Ethernet, Google TV will detect and connect to it automatically. Here you will be asked to sign in to Google TV. Click sign in and enter your Google account credentials. Once you are logged in, you will be asked to connect to Google Assistance app. Follow on-screen instructions to set it up. This is useful as you can use this feature to search apps, movies and control smart home devices. And after making few clicks, you will finally reach the Google TV home screen, similar to the one in the modern smart TVs. Now you can use it with mouse and keyboard. Apart from this, if we go to settings, system and storage, you can clearly see we have plenty of storage space for installing apps, games and other stuff. Apart from this, it also support remote. If you have compatible remote, go to settings, remote and accessories, pair accessory, pair it and use it to control the interface just like on the smart TV. I have tested it for watching videos on YouTube, installing games from Google Play and experience was smooth. So why don't you give it a try? Also you can carry your Google TV in pocket and connect it to any PC or laptop anytime you want to use it. And that's all about this video. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.